Well, I looked way over Jordan. Yes, Lord. I saw people robed in white. Well, I knew they was God's children, Lord. Praise the Lord. I seen them. What do you think that I did see? Well, I see a band of angels, Lord, coming after me. Now you can take me out to the graveyard You can lay this old body down But on that first resurrection morning Well, I'm gone Come up, come up, come up, come up, come up out of that ground Cause ain't no grave Gonna hold this body down Grave Gonna hold this body down When I hear that trumpet sound Gonna get up, gonna get up, gonna get up out of that ground Well, ain't no grave Gonna hold this body down. Oh, meet me, meet me, Jesus. Meet me in the middle of the air. Although the others have failed me, Lord, I know that you will be there. Well, ain't no grave. Gonna hold this body down. Well, ain't no grave. Gonna hold this body down. When I hear that trumpet sound, gonna get up, gonna get up. Gonna get up out of that ground Well, ain't no grave Gonna hold this body down 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 Won't hold me down Let's pray our gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you today, God, just thanking you, God, for the opportunity of being in your house. We thank you, God, for the beautiful day you've given us. We thank you, God, for this church, our pastor. We thank you, God, for the wonderful singers we have, and God, sometimes I think they're overlooked. But God, we thank you for the singers. We thank you for God, those that play our instruments. We thank you, God, for anyone, God, that that dedicates herself to this church. Lord, we ask you to bless our service today. God, we ask you to bless our pastor, Lord, help him to say something, God, that would touch someone's heart. God, we just thank you. We thank you, God, that we're in a church where souls are being saved. Yes. God, we thank you that we're in a church that believes in your healing power. Yes. And God, that people come here to be healed when doctors say there's no chance. Lord, we just dedicate our life to you, Lord. God, and thank you for the opportunity again just to serve you and love you. And God, one day, Lord, we're going to look in the eyes of our relatives who are waiting for us in heaven. And God, even they are going to say, son, daughter, father, wife, well done. I love you. Thank you, God, for the opportunity of praying to you. We ask these things in your sweet, precious name, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 I of the world, you step down into darkness. Yes, Lord. Open my eyes, let me see beauty that made. I am 
to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. King of all days, oh so highly exalted, glorious heaven above. Humbly you came to the earth you created, full of saints became poor. Here I am to worship, here I To see my sin upon that cross, I'll never know yes, how much it cost to see my sin.
and let folks know you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord. Hi, everybody. Glad you're with us today here at Gethsemane Baptist Church. It's a great day. We're honoring our grads today, and we're very thankful. I believe we've got 12 young people that have graduated from high school and college, and oh, what a great blessing that is. But we're just rejoicing that we're in the presence of a mighty and awesome God. Today we're going to be preaching a message about the fact that you can trust the God that you believe in. Well, preacher, I believe in Him, but you know I'm going through this and that. You can trust God. He is a friend that will stick closer than a brother. He'll never fail you. He'll never leave you. Stay tuned for the message today from Proverbs 3. You can trust in the God in whom you believe in. Also to remind you, don't forget, it is almost here. We're going to have revival at Gethsemane Baptist Church. We're looking forward to the glorious group called the Three Bridges being with us on Saturday, June the 14th, 6 p.m., Sunday, June the 15th at 10.30. And uh, they're going to be preaching. They're going to be doing the preaching and the singing. You're going to be blessed. Check it out. Be with us at Gethsemane Baptist Church. We're so glad you're with us today. I pray your heart will be blessed, but also let me invite you to come worship with us at Gethsemane Baptist Church. Located at 411 Blue Ridge Street, one block off of Lakeside Drive. We're near the main entrance to Lynchburg College. Come and enjoy the blessings of God. I'm going to be looking forward to seeing you and pray a great and mighty blessing in your stead today. Also, don't forget, visit us on the internet, itgm.org. We're also available on the internet. We're also available today on a live TV, and we're available on radio. So there's many sources of blessings today, and I just pray your heart will be over, overwhelmed by His goodness today. Thank you today for tuning in. May your heart be encouraged, and may the joy of the Lord be your strength today. Hallelujah. some praise in the house of God. Hey, listen. We want everybody to just be quiet a minute. I want that instrumentalist to go back and play that song one time. I don't know if you heard them this morning, but buddy, let me tell you what. 
They are plugged into heavenly power. Amen. Y'all ready, guys? On one, two, one, two, three.
If I had all the riches this world had to give, all the comfort that it bring, never needing anything, I could search the whole earth over far and wide, trying to find this precious love that was sent from God above. But it wouldn't be enough, no, it wouldn't be enough to buy one splinter of the tree Jesus died on. And I could not pay the price for one single drop of blood that was shed for my salvation. And if I had all the riches this world had to give, and I gave it all away, every penny to my name, to some beggar on life's dark and lonely street. All this kindness found in me could not win eternity, and it wouldn't be enough, no, it wouldn't be enough to buy one splinter of the tree my Jesus died on. And I could not pay the price for one single drop of blood that was shed for my salvation. And I could not pay the price for one single drop of blood that was shed for my salvation. Trusting the God you believe in. From the book of wisdom today, the book of Proverbs, the word of God says in chapter 3, verse, starting with verse number 1, My son, forget not my law, let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of day and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck, write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor. Did you hear that? You do these things. Here's the progression. This is what God is saying that we can do, and this is what will bring the fruit into our life. He says, so shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord, depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel and morrow to thy bones. May God add the blessing to the reading of his word. Life sometimes can be treacherous. Sometimes the roads of life not only become treacherous, but they become difficult to travel. Life is full in those places of twists and turns in our life that bring about a lot of uncertainties that we're not sure of. We don't know the right decision to make, or we don't know the right, the, the, the way, right way to go, or we're faced with, and there seems to be mixed signals, and we can't seem to just hone in on exactly what we're to do and how we're to do it. Well, folks, I'll tell you, we've got to remember something, and we should never forget this when you find yourself in those places. The Word of God says to be still and know that I am God. And that small, still voice of the Lord, it can change your life forever. See, today, God is in the business of changing lives and hearts. And the greatest change that He works in your life is the change through the process of salvation. I'm glad He's given us a promise that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. That if we will give our heart to the Lord, have you done that? Well, preacher, I believe God, and I'm trying my best to trust in Him. That's not the question. The question today is, have you given your life to Christ in salvation? Have you received Him into your heart and your life? Do you know today beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are a born-again, born washed-in-the-blood child of God? If you don't have that assurance today, God can change all of that. He can change your heart, change your life, change your eternal destination. 
and the changes that God brings into our life through this process of salvation, it's monumental. It's a landmark. It's awesome. Hey, God works in our life. I like the way that Paul put it. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, any, any person be in Christ, they are a new creature. Old things are passed away. Everything that was against you, everything that had you pinned against the wall, everything that was holding you down, all of a sudden, all of that is lifted off of you. And now you become a new creation. You've got a new life. You've got a, a, a new life that is found only in God. And if you don't have that, what are you waiting for? When he says, behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, today is the day of salvation. But the question becomes more intriguing. And we see today so many wrecked and wasted lives. And folks, this is what's really appalling to me. You can expect that in the world. But I'm seeing it in the lives of Christian people. Their lives are wrecked and seemingly lying in waste. Oh, I'm glad I've got a God today that can bring life to everything. I'm glad there's a God today that can take everything that is busted and broken and, and torn and tattered in your life and he can bring that all back together and mesh it together again with his blood and with his ability today and with his grace and he gives you a new life. That's what our God does. And the, the, the thing is that too many of us as believers, we're believing in God, but we do not trust Him. We believed in that He could save our soul, but we don't trust Him that He can supply our every need. We don't live for Him the, the way that we should. We affirm the existence of God, and we affirm today the work of Jesus on the cross. We say yes to all of that today. But there seems to be something in our life that's become a disconnect. You know, I don't know about you, but I can't stand to be disconnected. I'm in having trouble with my cell phone. I'll be, and if I've called you and I'm talking to you and all of a sudden I'm gone, I didn't hang up in your face. These things have a mind of their own. Sometimes they dial people and I have no control over it. They do all kinds of things. They're weird. I'm telling you. What? And I hate when you're talking to somebody to be disconnected. And then when you call them back, what do you get? You have reached so-and-so and leave a message on my voice box, blah, blah, blah. I didn't call the voice box. I called you. <laughs> Amen. But there's frustration in being disconnected, isn't there? And when we are disconnected today from the source of every blessing, folks, let me tell you what, that should bring an alarm to our life. We today should not and we do not have to be disconnected from Him. Folks, let me tell you today, a disconnect from our faith in Christ and the one today that has already provided a means to get us to heaven today, you know what, folks, let me tell you, we don't need to be disconnected from Christ we need Christ in our life to navigate us through life. I have to trust the Lord every day. And I'm sure you do too that are born again. Because if you're not born again, you're trusting what you think, what you know, and the opinions of others. And you're just kind of throwing a dart in the dark at a dart, dart board and hoping you hit the mark. Life is not like that. It's not a guessing game. I know in whom I have believed. I know who's with me. I know who's for me. I know who provides for me. I know who walks with me. I know that his way is always the right way. Hallelujah. And so you don't have to go through life guessing today when you can know in your walk and your relationship with him. But there seems to be in the ranks of believers today a disconnect. They're wandering through life with no purpose and no direction. As I heard these young people this morning uh, tell us their plans and going to different colleges and universities and higher places of education, that is fantastic. But let me tell you what, the greatest lessons are learned today in your walk, in your relationship with God. When you put Him first in your life, Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Listen, you can get all the knowledge from all the universities. You can be a PhD. You can obtain all the wealth of knowledge in this world. But if you don't have Christ, it's not worth a dime. There's a lot of smart people in this world, and excuse me for saying this, but they're dumber than dirt. They've got all the education, but they can't even tie their shoes. Amen. That's why we wear slip-ons. Amen. <laughs> I'm just kidding. 
<laughs> but listen, your greatest wealth of knowledge is to know him and to know his will and his purpose for your life and to know today that you can walk in the Lord. So this, this disconnect, it really results in the fact today that we don't trust him. We really don't trust the Lord that the way that we should today. Solomon wrote under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and he gave us the book of Proverbs, which has been entitled or declared as being a book of wisdom. Proverbs is a, a fantastic book. I encourage people when they read the Word of God, always include reading some Proverbs and always include reading some Psalms. The Psalms are uplifting and the Proverbs are wisdom. It gives you understanding and direction and leadership today. And wisdom is the ability today to perceive and apply the will of God to our lives. God is all wisdom, isn't he? So it would behoove us today to cleave to him and to desire the wisdom that he has. You can trust the Lord in every decision that you make. You can trust that God will always make a way for you. God will always supply a need for you. God will always direct your path. And he will give you an expected end, as Daniel said. And you know what? When he gives you an expected end and God's in it, it's got to be good. I mean, what God does is always good. Even through the valleys of life, he's still good because you have the light with you. Hallelujah. He's a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. He directs you. He leads you. He guides you today. And the first decision that you have to make is simply this. Listen to me. You've got to trust God. You've got to trust the Lord. You've got to put him first in your life. Trust the God you believe in today. For he is a friend that will stick closer than a brother. Trust the God that you believe in today, that he is your refuge and your strength and your very present help. Trust the God in whom you believe today to calm the storms of your life. Trust the God that you believe to supply that every need that you will have in life today. Trust the God that you believe to get you through everything that you will ever face in life. Oh, if it wasn't for the Lord, what would we do? Amen. Trust the God today in whom you believe to heal your body, your soul, and your spirit and every infirmity that invades your body. I'm being concerned about sickness. We seem to have a growing list in our church of sick people. People having procedures, people being in ERs. It looks like every week they, they, it's a list of somebody in, out, going to, sick, whatever. That concerns me. And it concerns me as a pastor, and it concerns me as your friend. I told my wife this past Friday, I said, God is moving on my heart this Sunday night, 6 o'clock. We need to have music about healing. We need to have message about healing. And we need to break open the oil of healing and start anointing and praying over people. I want to start hearing from you that God has touched me. I want to hear from you that God has turned your health situation around. And I believe he can do it. So tonight in the 6 o'clock service, if you know anybody, including yourself, that needs a healing from God in other, whatever area it may be in your life, you better be here tonight. Because, folks, we're starting at 6, and we're going to see the Spirit of God pour out his power in this room and touch people. We're going to proclaim the goodness of our God. We're going to lay it all on the altar. I believe today you can trust the God that you believe in, that that God can heal you, that he is a mighty God. Come on, church. I believe he's able today. I don't believe there's a sickness that you can have that he can't heal. I know and I respect the, the opinions of the medical field today, but there is a field that's higher than their field. There's a realm higher than their realm. There's a God today that's not practicing medicine. There's a God that's perfect medicine today. For with his stripes you can be healed. He's the God that can do all things today. And there's nothing too hard for him. You can trust the God you believe in to open the doors today that need opening. And he'll close the doors that need closing. You can trust the God that you believe in today to comfort you in the time of stress and times of situations and times of loss and bereavement and whatever it may be in your life. You can trust the God that you believe in today to walk with you through the waters and the waters will not even overflow you today. You can trust the God that you believe in today that you can walk through the fire and the fire will not even kindle up against you today. You can trust the God that you are walking with and believing in today that you can face the lion's den thank God of trials and you can come out triumphant 
You can trust the God that you believe in today that you can face the giants that try to defeat you and thank God he delivers you. You can trust the God that you believe in today that the fact that you can put your confidence in him today that you can face every oppression that Satan tries to throw against you and you can declare in God that you are victorious. You can trust the God that you believe in today, that you can face your adversary, the devil, and you can be confident of this very thing. If God then be for you, who can be against you? And the very fact is today that God has made an open declaration to every born-again child of God that you can be more than a conqueror through him that loved you. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. You can trust the God that you can believe in. I said you can trust this God that you believe in. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of the Word of God. The God who is always there. The God who is the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. Who was and is and shall ever always be. We can trust this God. We can trust this God that we believe in today. Amen. Blessed be the Lord. That's Him. And only through trusting him today can you really believe in him. Proverbs 1.33 says, But whoso hearken unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. Solomon prayed. He said, don't give me riches. He said, give me wisdom. And folks today, you don't need more money. You need more wisdom. Amen. Start living the rest of your life. Begin today that you're going to start living wisely. How do you do that? Well, verse 5 and 6 makes it very plain and very clear. He says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall what? Direct thy paths, right? Now these two verses, amazingly, says three things. And what he first says today, You can trust God entirely. Not a part-time trust, a full-time trust. For you know what? He's a full-time God. He's God all the time, church. He's God every hour of the day. He's God in every breath that you breathe. He's always there for you today. You can trust God entirely today. And knowing this to get wisdom, to navigate through the, through the courses of life today successfully, you've got to trust God entirely. The, the order is critical because you look at it and when it comes today to the navigation of our lives, we many times begin with ourselves and work back to God. That's not the way it works. You've got to begin with God. Just as the Bible says in the beginning, God, you've got to begin with God too. He's got to be the focus and he's got to be what your life is all about. When we, when we get in that place today, so many of us, well, we try, preacher, I've tried everything else. I guess I could try God. Why not today trust God always? Not as a last chance, but as a first choice today. There's a lot of stress and pain today that we could avoid in life if we would just stay with God. Amen. When you trust today, let me tell you, when you trust God, God, you're going to discover, is always there. And if you want to know why we should trust in the Lord first, the Word of God tells us in Romans 11, 33 through 36, Oh, the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. How unsearchable are His judgments. And his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? Or who hath been his counselor? Or who hath first given to him and it shall be recompensed unto him again? For of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. The reason we should trust the Lord is because his wisdom is beyond our ability today to conceive it. I mean, sometimes it just blow you away how God moved on a scene, how God worked in a situation, how you were at the end of your rope or the end of your situation, or you were going through whatever you were going through, and you didn't see no way, no hope, but all of a sudden, God steps on the scene. Oh, I'm telling you, that's the kind of God whom we serve. 
Folks, today we need to trust the Lord in every area of our living today. To know that He is there, knowing today that through time and in eternity today, you can read the resume of His Word today and you can know the experience of His infinite wisdom. He has infinite wisdom today. The point is, start making God today your first choice. Start trusting the Lord. This is just not for these guys that have graduated today. This is for every one of us. Because today, God wants to use us mightily. You need to trust the Lord completely, entirely, and you need to do that in every aspect, just not the spiritual aspects of your life. You need to trust God in every area of your living. So at, at the heart of who we are today should be the fact that we trust in the Lord. Now, how do, you, how do I know I'm trusting the Lord, Pastor? How do I know that today? You're not living to your own understanding. All of a sudden, your opinions and your thoughts went out the window. Now, all of a sudden, you're calling upon the God of all wisdom. You're calling upon the God of all direction. You're calling upon the God of all leadership in your life. You're trusting God. See, too many of us are steering down this broad way of life, and we're bumping from wall to wall, and we just don't understand why life doesn't have any meaning when God says, I am your life. I am your way. I am your truth. I am your everything today. Folks, we're not living today to our own understanding because if we do, we're living short of the goal of God. We're living today substandardly when God has a better way. Amen. Ford came out with a commercial here some years ago and says, Ford has a better way, or somebody said that. I don't know who said it. But let me tell you what, there's no way better than God's way. Amen. Because Fords break down on the side of the road too, like all the rest of them. Amen. But I'll tell you what, God will never break down on you. God will never turn his back on you. God will never leave you. God will never forsake you. God's always there. Hallelujah. And as I've said before, not somewhere standing in a shadow by God. He's got his arms around you and he's carrying you through everything that you're facing in life. Amen. That's the power of our God. And that's what our God will do. Human understanding is flawed by sin. Human understanding today is limited today by finiteness or today limited by your own limits. Every one of us in this room has limits. You can only stay awake so long. You can only work so hard. You can only do so much. But I'm telling you, we've got a God that can do all things. He's never tired. He's never wore out. He always has a way. He always has an answer. He always has a direction. Woo! I'm glad he always has a blessing. Yeah. Amen. And today, if we'll learn today to put our confidence in him, don't trust your limited finiteness today. Trust the fact that he's an infinite God with no limitations. For the word of God declares, A hey, Lord God, there is nothing. There is nothing. There is nothing too hard for you. Yeah. Amen. That's the God whom we serve. That's the power of our God. That's what he can do. God expects you to use your brain. You ever heard that? My dad told me, you know, sometimes in life, boy, use your brain. <laughs> you do have one, don't you? Yeah. But let me tell you what. God does want you to use your brain, but he wants you to do it under his supervision. <laughs> Amen. You'll never go wrong with the supervision that God has in your life. What we do must be governed by the standard of God. Amen. You can't mix the secular today with the sacred. You can't mix God's way with the world's way. Today, if you do, it's called double-mindedness. And so you can't mix God and the world, friend. And today, you can't think like a natural man when God's already put his supernatural spirit within you today. Amen? Because Paul said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So you have living within you, hear me out, you have living within you the supernatural ability of Almighty God. And when you say, well, I just don't see how I can, that's when the Word of God comes up in Philippians 4 and 13, says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Amen. 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 Hallelujah! God's with you and for you today. You've got to start thinking in the mindset of Almighty God. You've got to start thinking the way God would have you to think. 
You've got to start trusting the God who can do the impossible today. Amen. Oh, I like today. God will give you the abundance of his wisdom. But James said, if any of you lack wisdom, he says, let him ask of God and that he will give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not that it, may, that it shall be given to him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. You know what we do? We pray to God, we ask in faith. We run to an altar, oh God, oh God, I just got faith, I got faith, oh God, I got faith. And then you get right up and you go right back into the same situations that you were in, in doubt. You're wavering. Today, if you put it in God's hands, whoo, leave it there. Leave it in the hands of God. He says, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Now, we have to look at our life and say, oh, is that me? Well, if that's the way you're living, it is. But you don't have to live that way. Amen. You can't mix the secular with the sacred. You can't mix the world with God. You can't be loving Jesus on Sunday and living like hell on Monday. Amen. Amen. Could this be the reason today then maybe our prayers are not answered? Could this be the reason today why seemingly our life is in nothing but a chaos? We just go from problem to problem. Situation from situation. You know, I'm always amused. Boy, Facebook really tells a story, doesn't it? <laughs> some of y'all, I tell you, some folks ought to be careful how you air your laundry on the Internet. Because you know what you're doing? People are not going to be giving you sympathy. You may think it is. What I see is, yeah, thank you. That's, bad. That's a good word. Embarrassing. What I see is, it's reflecting Hey, your walk is with God and who you're trusting in. This world may be bad, but God is still good. Yeah. Amen. You may be going through stuff, but that's the good news. You're going through it. You're going to come out of it. And I found the quickest way out of what you're in, throw your hands up, not in surrender and giving up, Throw your hands up and surrender to the Lord and say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, who is my rock and my fortress, who is my God. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Folks today, listen, we need the power of God in our life. That if we say that we trust in God then, and we believe in God, we need to start living like that, right? Amen. We get ourselves so deep in the places where we are. And you know what? Finally, thank God, people do come to Christ today. And we come to him and we lay out every trial upon him today. If you believe in him, trust in him. Oh, number two today. I'll get to that in just a second. He says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. You can have thoughts, but let me tell you, they have to be measured by God's standard. Don't make a move unless God gives you peace about it. Amen. Don't lean to your own thoughts. Don't lean to your own understanding today. Lean on God. And it happened to Peter. You remember the story? And I'm not at number two yet, but hang on, I'm going to get there. It happened to Peter. He was fishing. Jesus is with him. Jesus says, cast your nets on the other side of the boat. I'm sure the mindset of Peter was, hey, you're the preacher. I'm the fisherman. Okay. And if you want to tell me how to preach, that's well and good. But don't tell me he had a fish because that had been my livelihood for all these years. But maybe Peter thought in the back of his mind, well, maybe I'll just appease him and go ahead and throw the nets over on the other side. Well, he, he appeased him, but I tell you what, all of a sudden he said, Whoo, Lord have mercy, the ship almost sunk. The increase was so big and so great. Why? Because he was willing to listen to Jesus. Folks, today, he does not make sense two-thirds of the time. His ways are not our ways, saith the Lord. His ways are higher than the heavens, hallelujah. And yet sometimes we think, oh, I got this all mapped out, reasoned out. I got my blueprint of life. I'll tell these young people now, they got great aspirations. They got great goals. They're going to school, and they're going to do this and do that. You know what? Don't be surprised if you hit a bump in the road. Don't be surprised if all of a sudden... Things change. But let me tell you what, if God is in it, go for it. 
Go where God is leading you. Do what God's calling you to do. Amen. Hallelujah. I thought I had my life all set. I thought this duck was going to play golf the rest of his life when he was 55 years old. Well, that was my plan. And it wasn't God's plan. But I'm glad I was wise enough to listen to God's plan. And you know what? I have no regrets. Hallelujah. When you're in the will of God, there are no regrets. And today, folks, let me tell you what. If God tells you to throw your net on the other side of the boat, it's time to do it. Amen. When you're facing a trial, you have to be like Job. Though you may slay me, yet will I still trust you, God. Amen. Amen. You have to rely on him. You've got to deal with what you're facing today, but you've got to deal with it with God on your side. You've got to lean on God, not yourself today. By the way, number two, trust God what? Intimately. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Folks, listen. Our intimate response today on relationship is that we should desire to make God our goal. He is what our life is all about. You acknowledge who he is, in your relationship as to who he is. And so therefore, you've got to realize God is the most important thing in your life. God wants to be involved in the details of your life. We think, oh, he just saved me. I, you know, now I can just go right on, tiptoe right on down the road and do my own thing. Uh-uh. God just doesn't want to save you and that's it. He just doesn't save you and just hurls you back into the world and say, good luck. He today is a constant guiding companion. He is a friend that will stick closer than a brother. He will be there for you. He will guide your life. But you've got to love him intimately. Today, really, if God came right into this room right now in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and came up to you as he did to Peter and says, Lovest thou me more than these? How would you respond? Understand he knows our heart, right? Folks, we've got to put God first and foremost in our life. We do that when we love him today. When it comes to life's directions, God's source is our resource. Amen. How do you acknowledge God in all things? It's very simple. You do it in two things, the word and in prayer. We need to be people in the word of God. These young people that are going out, listen, you may go to different schools and do different things, but don't leave the word of God out of the picture. And don't leave prayer out of the picture. And don't leave God, oh, wait a minute, how about the rest of us? Well, I'm not going to school and you're not. But we're out there in the treadmill of life every day going through. Folks, let me tell you what. The same God that's there with you when you're going through school or going through this or going through that. You know what? It's the same God that's with you all the time. You can go in the word and the power of the word. It's a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. The power of God's word today can take you through whatever you're facing. It'll be a friend to you. It'll lift you up. It'll encourage your heart. And then in prayer that we can have communication with God. Amen. You're talking to the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. You're talking to the creator who made all things today. The God who's on the throne. You're talking to him. Try to go to Washington and talk to Mr. Obama. Your chances are slim and none. But you can in a moment call upon the God who says, Call unto me and I will answer thee and I will show you great and mighty things which you know not. This is the God. We've got the word. We've got prayer. We today can walk intimately with him and know his will for our life. In the Bible, there are principles, there are precepts today for every decision that we make in life. And there is a decision for your eternity. There is a decision. Have you made it, by the way? There is a decision for your life. There is a decision for your circumstances. There is a decision today for your sicknesses. There is a decision today for your home. There is a decision today for your work. There is a decision today for your trials. Make the decision to acknowledge God in all things. And number three, trust God progressively. And he shall direct thy paths. He shall, he will. He can make all ways Every way straight, can't he? Amen. There are a lot of crooked ways in this world. And folks, let me tell you what. If you'll do it his way, if you will trust him entirely, if you will love him intimately, and if you will trust him progressively today, listen, when you don't know what to do in life, thank God God always knows what to do. Glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God always knows what's best. We don't. He does. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Hallelujah. 
Isaiah said in Isaiah 45 and 2 of the Lord, he says, I will go before thee and make the crooked way straight. Hallelujah! He'll straighten every way in life. He'll make a blessing show up that you didn't know was going to be there. And wisdom always allows you to experience God's plan for your life. Wisdom, let me say it again, allows you to experience God's plan for your life. Listen to the words of Solomon. For length of days, this is in verse 2 and verse 24. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be, listen to this, sweet. Sweet. Jackie Gleason had a phrase. Any of y'all remember that? How sweet it is! Oh, uh, he didn't even know what sweetness was. Sweetness is knowing him and trusting him. Sweetness is trusting the God in whom we believe in. Amen. And knowing that, man, I tell you what, he'll give you rest to your body, rest to your soul. He'll lift you up and encourage your heart. When you don't think you can walk through another day, my Lord, you're just leaning in the arms of Jesus. He's just carrying you right on through whatever you're facing. Amen. That's the power of our God. God wants you today to start trusting him so you can start living again. Some of you are not living, you're existing. You're going from trial to trial. That's not God's plan for your life. But preacher, everybody has trials. Yeah, but you know what? God can be in your trials too. And he can be just as sweet in your trials as he is any other time. And folks, today, God wants you today to trust him entirely, intimately, and progressively. And today, it's important. Most today, today, listen, they're going through life, and they're not trusting God. Why don't you first trust him in salvation if you don't know him as your personal savior? Start trusting him today in your home. Today, maybe you need a touch. I read some of this stuff on the internet, and people struggling and having trials in the home, and uh, counsel people and talk to people that are struggling in the home life. Let me tell you, there's one solution. It's, it's God. It's trusting in the Lord. Not to your own, own understanding today. It's trusting in the Lord. If you believe God, start trusting him today. And today, are, are you going to just believe him or are you going to trust him? That's the question we have to ask. What do you need in your life? What's the greatest need in your life today? What problems are you facing? What struggles are you going through? What answers do you need? The solution comes back. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Folks, today, you can trust God. Because he's there for you today. Amen. Bow your heads for a moment. Maybe you've never trusted him in salvation. Maybe you've never asked the Lord into your heart and your life. Could that be the case today? I mean, really, let's be honest with each other today. If you took your last breath before the sun set today, do you really know that heaven is going to be your home? Well, I hope I make it. I didn't ask you that. Do you know? If you don't know today and you're concerned, I'm going to ask you to do one thing. I'm just going to simply ask you today that if you're not sure that you're saved, I won't embarrass you. I won't come to you. I won't hurt you. I won't drag you up front here. I'll pray for you in my own heart. But you're not sure today. Would you slip your hand up right now? Preacher, I don't know that I know Christ is my personal Savior. I am not sure I'm saved today. Pray for me. Pray for me. If you're that condition, lift your hand. Lift your hand. Lift your hand. But do you today know the will of God for your life? Are you walking, are you trusting the God that you say that you believe in? You declare you're a born-again child of God? Are you today trusting this God today? These altars are open for you today to bring your every need in life to a God who will change your life. And all he asks you simply do is to come. Bring your life to him that he can change it. Father, I pray right now the spirit of the Lord will move on the hearts and the lives of each person in this room. May your spirit today find lodging in our heart. Anyone lost today, I pray they'll come forward and ask Jesus into their heart and their life and be saved. If there are folks here today seeking the will, Lord, they want to walk where the blessings are. Help them to come today. Help them to, Lord, come and seek you. 
If they got situations that need your help and your leadership, your grace and your touch, sickness and trials and decisions, oh Lord, answers are found here at the altar in the presence of a mighty God. Have your will in your way. And Father, if there's anyone seeking today a home to serve you out of, and you're leading them this way, help them simply just to come forward and desire and let us know. And we'd be honored to receive them into the fellowship of this body of believers. Have your will in your ways. We stand to our feet in Jesus' name.